This is dusty blue. I have cleaned it with white lightning, painted it with one coat of gray boss, and then I applied dusty blue. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Whitewash Glaze. This is really a great project product if you want to bring out some of the details, which I, I do, and you want to give it, a, I'm going to say maybe a coastal feel, a nice soft feel, really is a great look. I've demonstrated it before. I just felt like this piece really needed that, that, uh, that look, so we're going to try it together. The beauty of whitewash is once it's dry, if you don't like how it turned out, give it another coat, do something else, but uh, this is going to work out really well. I will say again, I did two coats, I'm sorry, one coat of dusty blue. If you don't like, like I can still see just a tad of boss in some areas, like I, two coats would totally cure any other issues or elements you might have as far as anything showing through. But you're gonna find that when you whitewash, I've often find that one coat's enough because the whitewash is gonna hide a lot of that. And it just goes along, in my opinion, to the concept of having more of a casual rugged piece okay so the next thing is just determining what uh, how do you want to apply it a brush can work you can also use Dixie Bell's new uh, sponges um, those are really great products too I'm going to stick with the uh, mini that'll give me a large a nice large surface the next thing I'd like to have handy let me pull that back out is the the misting bottle that Dixie Bell has is continuous spray, so that come in really handy. My recommendation here is I have not top coat, so we'll make sure we're on the same page of not top coat. I recommend that you keep it wet. I have a wet rag, and I'm going to use that to wipe off any excess. So everything I'm going to do right now is going to be fairly quick, but at the same time also wet, and we'll wipe that right off. But for contrast, if you would like, you can actually choose a wet rag or you can choose a dry rag. A dry rag is going to wipe less and leave more of the wash. A wet one's going to, as we would say, just wipe it right off. So there's a couple options and how much you put on there and how much you wipe off will all dictate how much of the whitewash shows and the look of your piece. So I'm going to go with more of a wet keep it wet because i don't want to lose too much of the original color of dusty blue so as you apply this work quickly if you don't work quickly it's going to dry on you and you will have fun getting it off could you do this after a, a top coat yes i just normally don't uh, most probably I would say because I'm working fairly quick and I'm going to just keep the misting bottle handy as long as you're I painted this yesterday so I'm not going to be disturbing the paint at all it's had plenty of time to dry tell you what let's go ahead because it is a larger enough larger surface let's go ahead and do our first wipe down it's not unusual. In fact, tonight I have two rags handy. If you're wiping a lot of glaze off, you might need more than one rag handy. Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I just took a, a moment to go ahead and before this starts setting on me, I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe that down. See how I'm going straight up and down? That's gonna keep everything looking consistently, consistent in the same stroke. This is a big buffet. Most of you are probably working on smaller pieces like tables and nightstands, I don't, whatever it might be. You could even do jewelry boxes with glaze or candlesticks. So this is a bigger, ta uh, I'm taking on a little bit more than normal. I forgot the spray, let's do that right now. So again, you might hear some people do that encourage you to Top coat first, that's fine. It makes the glaze just wipe right off. But that to me is another step. I'd rather put my top coat over my glaze. 
see how it's just it's coming off pretty well because I'm not letting it set if it's not coming off quickly give it another spray or your rag isn't um, wet enough I have used a dry rag before and I will tell you that it definitely leaves more of a a whitewash a whiter I don't want to say cloudy but it's just a different look which is perfectly fine it, you see how nice it is to have that little highlight of white in there I like that look a lot I didn't get underneath let me do that real fast it's not critical that you wipe off underneath but you can this depends on what you want people to see when they lay it on his back I guess I mean people are gonna see that part I have done whitewash uh, one, uh, not long ago. I did it all over Savannah, Savannah Mist, and that looked really nice. I'm going to grab another brush just so I can get in the corner. My rag won't get in there. So I'm using my, another brush to kind of be my rag, if you will. See how I'm going in the same direction? There we go. Full steam ahead. So if you want to leave a question there, I'm happy to go back after live and do my best to answer any of those questions that you might have on the technique. This is a very simple technique. It just is a little bit more of maybe a little bit time management from the standpoint if your project requires you to move quickly. But if you're working on something small, like I said, maybe a candlestick or something or a small chair, take your time. Work in sections at a time and you'll be you'll do great. But as you can see, I have not done any top coating. And as long as you work wet, it will turn out really well. So I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm giving it a, a custom look that is beyond just a basic flat finish. Again, nothing wrong with just one coat of paint. My, since my rag is wet, I'm not too worried right now. I could be worried about wet distressing, but the paint has dried, so we're okay. But just once in a while, keep an eye on maybe an area you may have accidentally rubbed the rag on, and uh, you want to wipe that clear. If you haven't seen me uh, on a live before, I'd love to know that. Curious how many of you are faithful Monday watchers and just haven't caught me on the weekend, it's usually when I'm live. But I'm always curious to know if we've got some new watchers out there. So, nice back and forth. I'm trying not to get too much on where I, I have been. But mist, wet rag, move quickly, and you're good to go. So there you see, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got this little indention frame. That's one reason I'm doing the whitewash is to bring that out. See, I'm using this rag to kind of fine tune any areas. The rag will leave texture if you're not careful. So that's why I'm using the brush just to kind of fine tune. When you're misting like this, try not to get too much on the previous area. I did not, and I'm not going to paint the sides or the edges of the drawers. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I will go back and clean them up because paint always gets in those areas. So I'll clean that up to make a nice finished presentation. So it looks like I put a little extra and if you put too much on there, just wipe it off. I strive or I encourage, always encourage watchers to not overly stress perfection because it's just, it can be hard to obtain, especially if you're new to painting, you haven't tried a technique before. 
I would probably just say own it. If it glitches on you, glitch the peas. <laughs>
that's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.